Yeah. Who has a weird question they didn't think they should ask? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get down and dirty. Let's get to the weird ones. <laughs> yeah. When you're starting out, there's a lot of potential to wind up in like sketchy situations or things that might not be ideal. I like this already. Yeah. <laughs> you have embraced this. Go. Well, uh, you know, I, I signed with uh, uh, an integer about eight months ago who has now stopped returning my calls. So the, uh, I guess the question is like, when do you know when it's time to get out of a situation? It's maybe not. Important. Did you sign? Did you physically sign paperwork that binds you to that person? No. Okay, so know that you can always, dip, if, if anyone's not working for you who says they're supposed to be working with you, and you, as long as, you know, you can feel free to part ways, and you, you just have to send them an email. Um, but I, I would say that, uh, what, what's sketchy about it to you other than they're not calling just, just, just that, or like, I've seen a lot of people do stuff that they're supposed to get paid for and they never did. Oh, yeah. And it, like, it's just, there's so many sketchy situations. Like, when, when, how can you tell when it's right to just dip out? You know, dip out? you're talking about it. Yeah. 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 I can Fair tell enough. in your voice, you know, it's done. <laughs> yeah. Do you need our permission? <laughs> Sometimes just trust yeah. yourself. Because, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, someone needs to be, they can't work for you unless they're excited about you. And yes. uh, uh, for as much as, like, Anagers and majors kind of do a lot of like lip servicing. They kind of like want to talk to you, and it feels a little like fake and slimy, especially coming from Chicago. When I first moved to LA, I was just looking at everyone like Rudy from the Cosby Show, like, what the fuck are you doing? Just like so doubtful. I was like, I don't believe you. Just like speak plain. Um, but they really butter you up. They tell you how great you are, whatever. But they really have to be excited and be returning your calls and contacting you, because otherwise they don't. They're just not gonna do anything for you and it's not a worthwhile relationship. I have a question actually. Do you guys ever not get paid for gigs? Like you've been told that you've been going to get paid and then you didn't get paid? <clears throat> been a while. I don't remember. Yeah, I think the union help the unions once you join those that kind of weeds out that aspect of it. But when you're doing non-union stuff I've definitely not been paid. Because right, it's it's because once you join a touring company someone's in charge of paying you, right? That's a union, yeah. And so that's a union gig but if you just show up for for improv and you're yeah, like, like oh, our, you're supposed to get Cheetos and a... Our yeah. festivals have been really great. And I think maybe because of what I was saying earlier, which is we were friends with a lot of these people who are booking us ahead of time. Um, but now I'm nervous. So I'm not going to Well, I always... It was stand-up. I always bring the email. I always bring the agreement. That, oh, and, that's uh, smart. And I print it, and then if there's any sort of problem, you just go, oh, do you remember this item? And, uh, and then, but I remember getting paid, like, you, there are, there's a, there was a dirtbag in Milwaukee who uh, would pay you with a gun on the table because he thought it was funny. The hilarity of a gun pointing at you. Uh, while you sat there, he's sitting here, and then he would purposefully underpay you like $75 oh. to see if you would mention it. And if you didn't mention it, you were a wuss, and he wouldn't book you again. If he did mention it, ha, you know what you're doing. And you're like, oh, why are we playing a horrible game oh, yeah. of dumb? I just want to <laughs> pay you. Because I remember he gave me, it was like two twenty five, and you were supposed to give me $300. I was featuring for the entire weekend. And he goes, and so he hands me the money. I'm looking at the gun, and I'm like, dude. And so I count the money in front of him, because I always count the money in front of them, and I always look at the check to make sure it's signed, because the, sometimes the check ha has not been signed. Just once. It was 1987. And I remember. So to this day, I look at the check to make sure it's signed. And it's, uh, but he can't, he shorted me 75 bucks, and I said, I was supposed to get three hundred dollars, and he said, "Do you think you're worth three hundred dollars?" Wow. It's not even an issue since the agreement was three hundred dollars. Uh, that wasn't the point, and I. But I said yes, I do, because I didn't know what else to. I didn't. I mean, you. And and if anybody ever makes fun of you, because sometimes they'll be like, "You're not very good at this negotiating." <laughs> Has anyone ever said? I've had people say that to me, and I was like, "It doesn't matter if I'm good at it or not. We're doing it, yeah. and uh, we're gonna plug through it." until I get better at it, and it's just a learned skill. It's, I mean, it's all such a learned skill, but you gotta trust yourself, I think. Yeah. Yeah. One of the gross things about being in show business is having to come up with your own quote, I think. And I mean, I guess it's not, I mean, it can feel gross, <laughs> like, and just kind of, yeah, uh, for, for what you get paid. I, I really hate for people to be like, what do you want to make from this? Yeah. Because I always feel like I'm gonna lowball myself. Like, I want to be fair, but I also want to make money but then and then when they always say yes right away I'm like oh I could ask for twice yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
My dad always said, uh, I called him up, I told him I didn't want to do a gig, and he said, what's the first thing I taught you? And I said, pick up other people's change. And uh, he actually got very angry. And, he said, and I said, I'm kidding. And he said, no, I told you the first lesson was never say no without a number. And I was like, that does sound familiar. That sounds very familiar. And he said, and I said, what does it mean? He said, you don't say no. You say, I would love to do that, but I'm going to need, and then you pick a really big number, like 11 grand. And uh, and then they say, well, I don't have 11 grand. You say, well, thank you for thinking of me. When, uh, when your budget goes up, please contact me again. And then he said, but all, but then then you gotta say, but my prices are always rising. And I said, oh my god, that's right. That's what I should do. And then I did it, but I lowballed myself. Because and I called him. I said, didn't work. And he said, what did you pick? And I what, uh, what was the number? And I said, three thousand dollars. And he said. Everyone has three thousand dollars, and I was like, <laughs> I said, well, now I do, but I have to go to the middle of Montana in February. <laughs> so <laughs> and I, that isn't even true. <laughs> never, three thousand dollars was a great deal for me to ask for at the time. Yeah. It still feels anyway. <laughs>